Fort McMurray, Alberta, in the heart of Canada's booming but sometimes controversial economic engine. There is a First Nations community that is attracting a lot of attention. A nation with revitalized community, culture, industry, education, and a hopeful future. But it is only very recently that this nation has made these remarkable changes. Good morning, Fort McMurray First Nation. This is Sarah speaking. So sufferings from dysfunction are still completely affecting our community every day. Um, they all essentially send from residential schools and the oppression, every, everything that our people have been through since essentially Christopher Columbus came over. Yeah, I can remember fights out here, cops everywhere, nuts. You couldn't go out of town for a weekend without somebody breaking into your house. There was no life here. And they took the children away for no reason, for to residential schools. I don't think they'll ever recover from it. We're kind of lost ourselves and we're, what are we trying to pass down to our kids? Nothing, because it was taken away from us. Walking down the road you're taken, your parents don't even, didn't even know where you were. One of the supervisors threw me into my room for three days and uh, didn't allow anyone to come in or give me food or nothing. I think I was five years old that time. And I also learned that that school that I was in it closed in 2004, I think. There's been rumors and stories, which I believe, that probably maybe 20 to 30 percent of the children they took did not survive. So I think it's a travesty of our Canadian history. There's been a system created under the Indian Act, and then if we don't change that through being self-governant, independent nations, that's all it's ever going to be, versus controlling our own destiny. As Canada celebrates its 150th birthday, First Nations communities have another perspective. They have rights as any nation would. They have not only human rights, which, by the way, were only given to First Nations in 2008. We have just become humans in Canada. I had an oil company representative tell me one time that, uh, that the oil company didn't even consider them an impacted community. Um, today, I, I think it's one of the things that makes everybody proudest is that you have to talk to Fort McMurray First Nation. They're a major player. The sacrifices of the past somehow made this nation stronger. How was it that they were able to turn things around so completely? My vision was to build a reserve and build it like a town, right? Have all the laws and uh, everything that comes with it. When you're driving down the highway, they're gonna see the, you know, the new gas station. They're gonna see a health center there. There's a little Head Start building. And here we have uh, 44 new houses. But to work with industry, you gotta put a good company together and get the best qualified people you can. So what prosperity means to me is not necessarily the money. It's about coming together and, and being united to tackle the issues that we face as a nation. Our CEO, Brad, came in to have a meeting with me one day. And he's like, you know what, Fran, do what you need to do. Dream big, shoot for the stars. Health Canada really respects all the programs we put on in a year here. We do over 50 programs a year in this, this little tiny health centre, and we provide that to our people all year long. So before the Aboriginal Head Start that we have now, um, there were no options for childcare. We're teaching our children to be proud of who they are. So we invite elders to come into our program and they do um, round dances, they do um, traditional language. We have a Cree wall and a Cree corner in the back and so we teach the children um, common Cree words. It's, it's really evolves around money, but it it's, has to be more than that. It has to be about healing this community, right in the, the wrongs of the past. How do you do that? I mean, it's through spirituality, culture, and language, right? Without revenue streams, you won't be able to develop culture. How are you? Those things cost money. We need to do a healthy combination of both. If you think about how far Fort McMurray First Nation has come in the last 10 years, and it boggles your mind to think how far they'll go in the next 20. May 3rd, 2016. This radio station is unmanned. 80,000 people evacuated Fort McMurray as forest fires threatened the city. Tens of thousands took refuge at 468 First Nation. 
So within not even an hour, there was about 60,000 people, like no room to move. So we started passing water around. Then I was helping out at the Petro, our um, First Nations Petro pen, and uh, helping pump gas. There was bumper to bumper traffic here. We had our members coming from their homes, inviting strangers really into their homes. Like I slept in a bed and I let the people come in. There was about four or five different families in my home and we started hugging oh well we were crying at the same time because everybody was crying and I'm I was crying too when it comes down to tragedy everyone's equal we're gonna do whatever we can to help people we actually drove right through the fire at that point I was uh, vibrant I get kind of emotional thinking about it now and uh, I asked the chief uh, like are we gonna turn around he said no we're not and so me and him we raced through the flames, like literally through the fire. The, the chief and uh, the council staying back to build firewall and making sure that our reserve was okay. Like I'm completely proud of being a part of this community and our leadership that we have in place, all of the staff. And now my husband and I are selling up our home in North Battleford and we're moving back to live on the Fort McMurray First Nation. It's joyful here. <laughs> Prosperity has brought new hope, but prosperity also brings new challenges. When I see like large amounts of money come in, I know what happens when people who don't know what to do with money get a large amount of money, and generally it's not good things. Is there a risk of having too much money, too, too much success or prosperity? That's the biggest fear. If we can create a process or a system that manages economic wealth, we're gonna probably do more damage than the history has done. This is a First Nation forging a new path, balancing progress with the traditions and values that have strengthened its people in the past, a nation hunting for its own future.